part of Fashion Nation Records featuring Morris Claiborne and J.J. Wilcox, yep. formerly of the Dallas Cowboys. Formerly of the Dallas Cowboys. As you know, the Dallas Cowboys did not lose last week. Hoop, hip, hooray! <laughs> we, al we always win that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a bye week. <laughs> so, so we didn't lose that one. So that being the case, you know, it's been a long road in this campaign as we are now down to the last final 49 hours of the midterm 2018 midterm election. So we want everyone to go out and vote on Tuesday. If you were going to do early voting, well, you're a little late for early voting. That's the reason why we had it for two weeks, just in case you decided to, uh, uh, well, not vote early. Here's your chance. This is the date. Early voting, as you know, started October 22nd and ended November 2nd. Election day is November 6th. This long road campaign that we were talking about, uh, Judge Stacy Williams uh, is here with us uh, today. We try to get her propped up here with her social media. Uh, let's let's go ahead and try to figure something out and get her propped up on her own over here. So I'm, she can I'm, I'm playing with it. So go ahead, Jesse, help us out here. Okay. And meanwhile, we will go ahead and I, I tell you what, I'm gonna help you out right Thank now. You. I'm gonna Thank you. Right now. Let's yeah. go ahead and move it back that way and see if we can have it going this way. Yeah. Okay. Now. Have it facing you, because your people want to see you, not me. There <laughs> Hi, you go. everyone. All right, there, there we go. go. All right. Now, yeah, okay, that's, see, you're going gonna to mess that one up. Tell you what, we're going to start that one over, and okay. this is a primer to everyone that's listening to us right now. This is how you do it right now. You have to take that one out. Finish. Finish it. Start it over again, because the way you have it done now, Judge Williams, your, your, your camera view is going to be one- Second, it's going to be uh, it's going to be panning, and then the other side, the next minute, it won't be. So we've also provided you with an official commission. Uh, I can't even get that live. Out, right? <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. We got you going on there. So right. this is what we do it on the commission radio show. This is casual, informal, informal, but with a lot of the information that we will uh, want you to go ahead and use. So that being said, this is still not coming up for her. And this is very important that she get her message out. So we will go ahead and work with it, with Strip. We'll go ahead and have this handled. Meanwhile, without further ado, Judge Stacy Williams, you've heard about it in all of the newspapers through all the various lawsuits that have came along to get you off the ballot. And that's why we were playing a long road, because it's been a long road. It's been a long road. Since January of 2019, um, 2018, I, a lawsuit was filed against me. Um, actually, I was a part of two lawsuits. One was the big lawsuit with the, when the Democrats, as a group, were challenged to get off the ballot because allegedly our Democratic chair did not sign certain documents. But then I was special enough to be blessed with my own lawsuit filed by, by my opponent, who actually in the past has run five times in the last 10 years. Um, so this year he decided to file a separate lawsuit challenging my ballot petitions. Um, it's really interesting that someone from the other party would decide to ask the judge to legislate from the bench and to not follow the law. And if I can just go into just a little bit of detail because people ask me, what was the lawsuit all about? Well, for in order to get on the ballot, you have to get petitions. Um, that's governed by the Texas Election Code. The code says every part of every petition must be accompanied by an affidavit. My opponent wanted the judge to legislate from the bench and say that every page of every, um, of every petition must be accompanied by an affidavit. Well, clearly, even a first grader knows the difference between part and page, which is why the conservative Republican judge from Tyler, Texas, ruled in my favor. Then my um, opponent filed an appeal with the Dallas Court of Appeals. Dallas Court of Appeals, which is totally Republican, followed the law and um, ruled in my favor. So um, unfortunately, I had to spend over $76,000 in campaign funds in order to defend myself. 
Um, unfortunately, um, my party had separate legal counsel, so I had to obtain my own legal counsel. But I'm very lucky that I had the best legal minds um, in Dallas County, the state of Texas, on my legal team. I had Anthony Farmer, Tex Casada, and also, which was to the chagrin of the Dallas County Republican Party, um, former Supreme Court Justice of the Texas Supreme Court, Tom Phillips, was on my legal team. Now, he's the darling of the, um, of the reform movement, tort reform, but when we called him up, he said, I was waiting for someone to call me. This is the most ridiculous lawsuit I've ever, um, that I've ever heard of. No, I want to be a part of your legal team. Now, granted, he wanted to be a part. I had to pay him, but it was worth every penny, and I'm so grateful to my lawyers who jumped into action from the very beginning and stayed with me throughout the lawsuit. But now, I guess what's really kind of frustrating, after my opponent filed the lawsuit, took me through 10 months of a lawsuit. Um, you know, it, it's very draining to be in a lawsuit. Right now, he's nowhere to be found. He hasn't shown up for any candidate debates or no signs. So he's making a mockery of our entire election system because he files a lawsuit and he didn't win the lawsuit, now he doesn't want to be an active candidate and really allow the citizens of Dallas County to select um, who should be judge of the 101st. Um, it says a lot right there about character and integrity. Now, this campaign that, you, you, that you're into now, in the last 49 hours, how can you really get up for a campaign that you've been campaigning for all year round? I mean, it hasn't been a downtown for it, has it? Well, I don't know if you could say campaigning. Um, I'm truly a community servant, and so I, I love my community. And I've always, I've always been active before I was a candidate, and probably I just have more visibility because I have the title judge in front of my name. But um, I've always been out. I've always regularly supported um, lots of our social organizations. I always buy tables. Um, the only thing that's helped me as being a judge, I created a program called the Citizen Civil Academy, which is a free nonpartisan program to educate citizens about the civil court process. Now you hear a lot of judges particularly come on your show and say, oh, I have this judge, I have this program. But their program um, affects their docket. If someone graduates their program, they get maybe adjudication and it helps reduce the judge's docket. The Citizen Civil Academy is for the citizens of Dallas County. Um, the people who appear in front of my court are not the people who attend the Citizen Civil Academy. Um, we've taken it all over Dallas County. We've had students as young as six and as old as 92, and it's free. I pay for the Citizen Civil Academy with my campaign funds. I'm not getting any funding from the county, um, the feds, anywhere. I don't use county funds, county, um, even county um, Xerox machines to, to, um, to, to prepare handouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all comes from my campaign funds. So it's truly a gift to the citizens of Dallas County. And let me just explain, um, as a civil district court judge, I hear no family, no juvenile, no probate, no criminal. So that leaves lots of commercial cases, co cases between businesses, personal injury, medical malpractice. So the type of individuals who are coming into my court are those that can't afford to pay the $500,000 an hour for lawyers. That's how um, much, $500,000? $500 to $1,000. $500 to 1000 Yeah, gotcha. yeah, but I'm sure there's some big fancy New York attorneys doing transactional work that, that might charge their um, corporate clients. But I mean, it's a lot. Even if you're paying $500 an hour, that's a lot. And the really top trial attorneys, $1,000, $1,500 an hour. So those clients are very well healed, so they don't need to come to the Citizen Civil Academy. Um, my academy is to help citizens understand and navigate the, not only the court process, but particularly the civil court process. Now how long has this uh, academy been going on? Since the fall of 2015, we started out at the George Allen Courthouse, and then we said, you know what, let's really go out into the community. So then we went to the West Dallas Community Church, the Highland Hills Library, the Cooper Center in North Dallas, then we went south to the Museum of International Cultures in Duncanville, we went west to the Rod Waller Park Branch Library, then we went um, to the White Rock Hills Branch Library, the Downtown Library, and the Polk Wisdom. We conduct the Citizen Civil Academy twice a year in the spring and fall of each year. How many people normally attend these events? 
Um, normally about, I'd say 30 to 40 in each session, but we've graduated over 250 um, citizens from the Citizen Civil Academy. What do you uh, hope to get out of this academy? It's, it's my service to the community. They don't teach civics anymore, and a lot of times when people get served with a lawsuit, they're very scared. They've never been in the courtroom, they've never been to the George Allen, they don't understand. For example, you have to file an answer. If you get served, you have to file an answer. If not, whatever the other side is accusing you of, they can get a default judgment and get lots of money damages against you. So you're saying if I receive something, if I ignore it, that's, that's the worst thing. When that processors, process server is knocking on your door, go ahead, accept service, get legal advice. If you don't have the time or money to do it, respond to it. That service will tell you that you have to answer that lawsuit 20 days Monday next. But people, you've got, you've got to respond to it. And another thing, if you try to ignore the process server, there is a means by which they can get a judge to approve just attaching the lawsuit to your door. Don't ignore it. Your time to respond to the lawsuit is ticking. All right, I haven't been served with any papers, so I don't know this process, so I need to go to your academy yes. as well. So someone can actually serve me with something by sticking it on my door? Yes, and, as and long as the judge has um, approved it, that's called substitute service. They have to file an affidavit saying, look, we've gone to this person's house, and we know it's your house because we've done a computer search. Their records show that they really do live here, but judge, they will not answer the door. So if, it, if they follow all the statutory requirements, I sign an order, and then I authorize them to tape it on your door. Or if you have a gate in front of your house, they can tape it on your gate. And that counts as service, and your times, the timeline starts ticking for you to respond to the lawsuit. And, and, and that's the importance of you coming on this show and breaking it down like that. Because I would get a phone call from someone who would say, who would say what you pretty well just stated. They said, hey, I, they didn't serve me. They stuck it on my door. Nobody <laughs> came and gave me anything. So I didn't think it was real. I just left it up there with the other bills I wouldn't have paid. So that was it. And no, you can't do that. Can't then do they'll it. get a default judgment, and then you're liable for lots of, um, usually lots of money. Um, there are legal ways to get that um, set aside, but then you really need to have a lawyer. Because you need to pay a lawyer to have it set aside. Right, yeah. So you, you can run, but you can't hide from the lawsuits. You can run, but you can't hide. That's the old Joe Lewis deal. Says, saying, saying that you can run, but you can't avoid the consequences of what's going to happen to yeah. you. Consequences of what's going to happen now on November the 6th. What do you foresee is going to happen? Oh gosh, if I could foresee, I'd be sitting in Hawaii with a couple million dollars in my bank account. <laughs> um, turnout has been amazing. The question is, which side is turning out the most um, voters? Um, I've been all over Dallas County since my jurisdiction's over 22 cities, and I've been north, south, east, and west. And I have to tell you, it's pretty scary that first week, because when I went north, lines were out the door. They, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., I'd go south, and the number of people voting was not as high. Um, also, which was a bit disappointing, um, when we sold to the polls on Sunday, um, there weren't as many people as I expected. I was expecting busloads. The location I was at, there were no busloads of people. Um, I understand that during the latter part of this week, there were more individuals in the southern sector voting. Um, we traditionally vote on election day. I'm praying that that happens. Now, the election that you're in is all over. You don't just rely on souls to the polls in the southern sector, so to speak. You rely upon souls everywhere, to speak. Everywhere, but my, I know where my base is. And I need my base to come out. What can we do to draw the base out? Well, right now I know I have people knocking on doors, making even phone today. calls. Sarah, you, oh, even you today. Dressed today is, yes. Oh, yeah. Were you walking this morning? Yes, I was yeah. walking this morning. I appeared at two breakfasts. Um, after I leave here, I'll be knocking on doors, and I actually make phone calls. So, um, so don't be surprised if you hear my voice. I do. I do call. And then let's just hoping that um, in the houses of worship, I mean, however you feel, you just need to exercise your right to vote. And I don't know how long the lines are going to be. This time, since if people waited, um, 
you have to vote in your precinct. You can't vote in one of the early voting locations. Which is very convenient if you were working, say, for example, in Coppell, someplace like that, and you you at work, and you live in the southern sector. And, well, you can vote out there. And you could vote anywhere, but if you didn't exercise your right to vote during early voting, you have to vote in your precinct, which means 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now, how many hours of sleep are you getting? <laughs> I ask that's my standard question. How many hours of sleep? Just because I answer emails all hours you, of the night. <laughs> I, I'm on Twitter at 2 o'clock in the morning exchanging tweets between myself and the President of the United States, and I see yours. Yeah. yeah. I'm up. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm constantly thinking, and I'm constantly trying to think of ways to, um, to get more outreach and to touch someone somewhere. Now, this Citizens Academy that we have, that's one way of doing it. You, you, that's can you your upon, But can you build upon that? How? That's what I'm asking you. How can you build upon that? I don't, I just outreaching more. I mean, there are parts of Dallas County I haven't been to. I haven't been to Irving. I haven't had a session in Grand Prairie. Um, that's, that's, I would love to have you in there. I'd love to. You know, the biggest hurdle that I have every spring and fall is actually finding a location um, for the Citizen Civil Academy. So if you can help me find the location, I'm, oh, I'm there. Oh, we have plenty of locations we can find it there. Maybe just come on. Just okay. Get elected November All right, spring 2019. So we'll be able to go ahead. All right, that. that'll be great. So we're going to take a quick break in a minute. And when we come back, we want to go ahead and acknowledge those people who are listening in on to the Commission Radio Show. Again, I'd like to say hello to Judge Amber Gibbons Davis, who's there joining us. Uh, Jay Mack is uh, online as well. Tanya Willis is online. Miss Vida Shepard is here as well. And Marino Echo Latino. <laughs> yes. A colleague in social justice and also radio. And my man uh, Jacob is here. So uh, we would like to say hello to him as well down in Houston, Texas and watching. And we do know from him that we are able now to reach those people in India as well. Salute to him and our Indian friends across the world. So Strip, go ahead and play some music and we will be right back after this break. Sixty 
seconds. I wanted to go ahead and put that voice out. I was just gonna say, <laughs> let them know how do all yeah. kinds of things. Sounded like some quiet. You know, so quiet time. Hey, I'd like to send a shout out to my dude Keith Solis. You know, quiet time music and everything. You know, being off in the radio a little bit, I've been able to afford it, uh, the opportunity to meet some great people, and it's been because of you on the Commission Radio Show. We've launched this. We're into now season number five. I can't believe it. Season number five, and I thank you. I appreciate it. Did this as somewhat of a, a of a, a lot. I was a guest on someone else's show, uh, you know, and hey, from there, you know, that's what it was, you know. So the, the real deal is here. So uh, the real deal is now election time, November six. November six. Tell us what's up. Stacy Williams, Judge Stacy Williams. I like interviewing you. I'm gonna break it down <laughs> because you have a sister. Yeah, <laughs> and folks out there don't know judges like I know judges. You know, we we talk and everything, but offline and everything, they they judges. They still judges. I I have to realize and respect all the time. I can just can't say anything to all these judges. Specifically, ones that have sisters, a twin <laughs> yes. sister. So I like to say hello to uh, also, you know, outside of Judge Stacy Williams is Tracy Williams. All right. So thank you again for both being on the show. Uh, it when y'all are campaigning, y'all have a symbolic energy about you both. Yes. Well, it's very focused. I mean, this is very, I take this very seriously. You're asking the public to trust you um, with being a judge, to be fair and decisive and follow the rule of law. So um, it's very important. We have to cover over 22 cities in Dallas County. If you're not focused, then you have no business being there. So when you're focused uh, in your campaign and people ask you that, that, that same age-old question, what type of judge are you? What type of judge are you? First of all, I'm a very good judge. I'm a very fair judge. I believe in the Seventh Amendment, the um, right to trial by jury. And so I make sure that's preserved in my courtroom. Number one, attorneys are given as much time as they need to present their case. My predecessor um, would take some motions by submission, which means whatever your lawyers wrote on a piece of paper, that's what he would make a decision on. A lot of times, um, when you have oral arguments, that helps clarify the issue um, for a civil judge. Particularly, we have over 12 different subject matter areas that we cover. We cannot be an expert in all of those areas. So I might go from a complex oil and gas case to a Deceptive Practices Trade Act, which is dealing with consumer issues. Uh, I might go to a fraud case. And so to me, not only if it's a case dispositive motion, I want to hear from the attorneys. Because they might have gone A, B, C, but where I might make my decision because there was a recent Dallas Court of Appeals decision, I want to take the discussion in another area. And I give them as much time. My predecessor just said, nope, whatever you put on the paper, that's it. So we make it fair. Number two, the most important thing um, about being in the system is having a jury trial. You actually have to beg not to have a jury trial in my court because the best way to resolve your dispute is between 12 citizens that reflect Dallas County. And the way we achieve that is in jury selection. Some judges will get up and say, oh, this is just a small car wreck case. I'm going to only give you 15 minutes per side. But to me, it is case dispositive 
who sits on their jury. So I give attorneys as much time as they need during voir dire, which is French, um, to select a jury because it is absolutely crucial. In fact, I once had a bailiff after we um, sat the jury panel, we could take a bet on who was going to win based on who sat in that jury box before even hearing all the evidence. It's absolutely crucial. So I believe in giving the attorneys as much time as possible. That's the reason why some people say that the jury system and also the judicial system is really, if you can determine by looking at the jury, the makeup of the jury or who's sitting on the jury, then. Well, well no, that, that's incorrect. And that's sometimes how attorneys conduct voir dire in an incorrect manner. You can't go by race or economic status. In voir dire, the, if you have good attorneys, they're going to start asking about attitudes and beliefs and ideas. Now, they can't go into the facts of the case, but they want to find out the types of television shows that you watch because there have been studies that show if you watch certain television shows, you might lean one way, but you want to talk about beliefs. You can't say that just because someone's black, they're going to be sympathetic to you know, a criminal defendant. You can't say that an African American is always going to rule in favor of a personal injury victim. You can't say likewise a white person. So what you have to do, you have to ask specific questions where the jurors can talk. So they, they actually have the law and order question? Excuse me? The law and order question. You know, law and order comes on TV. I, know I don't watch television. You don't watch TV. Okay, because <laughs> my, my mom's watch law and order, right? Okay. So it's like she has a law degree because she watches all the criminal shows, law and order and all. And back when they have LA law, when that was going on, okay. she, you know that. So people like that who, who watch those kind of TV shows, how, how would, a, I'm just speaking, serious question. Yeah. How would, how would a, a lawyer approach that kind of person? Really? Well, you know, that, again, that goes into, there's, there are special jury consultants that make a lot mm -hmm. of money who go into the deep psychology of it. I just know, just from a bird's eye view, that there's certain questions or certain audiences that watch certain shows. Um, yes. that, that's, that's beyond yes. mine. But as a judge, what I can do to ensure that a fair, that the attorneys have had as much time as possible to present their case and select a jury, I give them as much time as possible. Because that's their one chance. I mean, when my bailiff, and maybe I need to clarify it, we would just, after listening to the board dire and seeing, how, you know, and we have the opportunity to have read all the petitions, we've sat through all the motions, so we know what themes the attorneys are hitting on. You outside sitting as a, as a part of the veneer panel, that's, that's your first time hearing about it, so you don't know, but based on the law and based on the type of individuals you get on your jury panel makes a big difference. So that's we are so fair, and we I really give attorneys as much time, and I think that's where we've been able to distinguish ourselves in the 101st, because we are a trial court. We're in trial usually all the time, and it's fair. Now, they might not like the outcome, but at least they know they've gotten their um, fair day in court. You give the people the opportunity. Yes. Speaking of giving the people the opportunity, uh, people the opportunity, let's go slow it down. Speaking of getting the people the opportunity, uh, I received this in the mail uh, this morning. Speak volumes and vote. Stand up, speak out, tell your sister, take your mother, text a friend, show your children, show the world we exist, we matter, we vote. And this is it right here. So I want to go ahead and let everyone see it. And this was addressed to my daughter. So this is obviously targeting women, right? Yes. Women. Tell me about, uh, about this and how you decided that you were going to do this. Well, um, d of course, when you run for office, you do all types of statistical analysis, um, who votes, why, their age group. Um, and we know through the Kavanaugh hearings, um, women are energized right now. Women are angry. Um, I, I just, I have to take a step back because um, I think it woke up a sleeping tiger um, and women are concerned. So I, the purpose of that flyer was targeting women and we have different racial groups and a particular age group, um, they, they're finally getting it. Maybe they thought, you know, as some individuals, you know, post-racial, post-sexual, this wasn't a problem, but now things are coming out and the only way that you can speak up is to vote. And so that was that was our um, our theme: stand up, speak out, 
Tell your sister, tell your mother, te text a friend. Show your children. Yes. So often women have been silenced. Not silent, but silenced. Yes. Your campaign, do you view it as a way of opening up women's mouth to speak up? Well, I, I just hope that they, they see someone who's out, who's there, who's present, who's listening, who's accessible. Um, I, I think that serves to encourage them, particularly like when mothers bring their little girls to the polling locations, and I always stop and talk to them. And You know, you can be whoever you want to be. In these days and times, with the current administration being what it is, and you don't have to come in, I'll come in, uh, there seems to be something that needs to be said more often as we go to the polls uh, on November 6th. More people need to speak out and they need to stand up regardless of their situation. But I deeply applaud, I really applaud the fact that, that in Dallas County we have more uh, women judges probably than any other place in Texas with maybe the possible exception of Houston. Well, if you look at that flyer that Houston had, most right. of those are candidates. Those but are as candidates. we speak now, Dallas County has the highest number of African-American female judges, I, I think I would be safe to say, in the country. I thought so, too. But, but came Houston, with, Houston came, came out with a card. Yeah. But, you know, the devil is in the details. And you go back and look through it, they're all candidates. Well, that's the reason why you have lawyers. Because <laughs> they'll go ahead and spell out, out, out those details like yeah. you just did. But again, I said I believe, and then going back on it, well, then I've been corrected. If I was thinking incorrectly, I've been corrected that in Dallas County, we have more women judges than anywhere else. It's only appropriate that Dallas County would have that because it is the home of Judge Sarah T. Hughes, the late Judge Sarah T. Hughes. So, uh, so now we're going with that as a legacy to the present day. Definitely, and I think after this election, we'll be adding four or five more, so I'm very excited about welcoming those women to the bench. Welcoming to the bench. Do, do you guys have a grooming process? Um, unfortunately, we don't, but I think we're, th we're, we've been talking, there's been talk of some informal process, because it can be a major change from being a lawyer, an advocate, to being a judge, a decision maker, and then getting used to, um, you're under a microscope. You have to be very careful with seeing under that microscope. Now, we've had past conversations before about being under a microscope, about it. any little thing you do is magnified. Totally. Can you explain that? Not personally, but just to <laughs> Not personally. I just think that you have to, okay, I'll, I'll give a um, quick example. Um, we have to visit lots of different churches. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't know it, but someone said, oh, Judge Williams always wears stockings to church. And who would have thought that someone would even... But why does it even really matter? That's well, that's to some of the answer. old church women, it does. Okay. And, and, and it's okay. Being that I don't wear stockings, I yeah. wear socks. It really doesn't. And mean. they're expensive too, and they run all the time now because no and, one wears stockings. And so. then if you were to wear that and they run, then someone will say, She got a hole yeah. in her stockings. That's yeah. why you have that. three or four pairs in your then trunk. Of look your for a reason not to vote for you. Yeah. Hole in stockings. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I've been amazed of, of people who have actually walked neighborhoods and knocked on doors. Yeah. It's, 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 it sounds glamorous, but it's not. You can have, a lot of times people don't answer the door, you hear the doors, you hear the television, and they, the dogs, but they won't answer the door. Then you have certain people will say, oh, is so-and-so endorsing you? And you'll say no, and they'll slam the door in your face. But then there have been times when people have been absolutely wonderful. I remember in 2014, it was hot, and I guess I looked like um, the thing that the cat brought in. Um, they said, oh my God, baby, you need some water. They brought me in the house, let me cool off, gave me water and lemon cookies. Water and so, lemon cookies? Yes, it was the best. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> I was hungry, no too. No milk, <laughs> water, just get you some water. But you was thirsty. I was thirsty, yeah. and, I, and you don't get to eat much. The, that's why I was asking you earlier yeah. about sleeping. And you don't get to sleep much. Now, this past uh, election uh, cycle, uh, uh, Judge John Cruzo came up to my house and he tripped me out. Knocked on the door, I looked through the door, I said, John, John, John Cruzo there? And he, he wasn't looking up because you have this this list of where you're going. And on the list it says you're there at this house. And you're already looking at the next house where you're going to because you're waiting for the people to answer the door. And he, he actually was uh, out walking 
uh, in the poll one. So that was, that was good. It was an exciting time to see people who actually want the job to actually to actually do. Right, yeah. And it, but it, it takes a lot. Because a lot of times he's probably looking down because you know that someone's not going to answer the door. If someone actually answers the door, that's like a hallelujah moment. And then you also got to time yourself, too. Because you got so many seconds, minutes to go ahead and deal with what you're talking to. Okay. Speaking of time, Strip, we at 2.41. We're going to take another break, and then we come back. We're going to conclude with the interview. I just want to go ahead and take a, a quick break to acknowledge the people who are joining us uh, again. Uh, Kenya Soul Singer is listening in, so you need to play some Kenya Soul Singer music since she is listening in. And we have uh, Tony Morris, who's always there. And Katrina's joined us, Gregory Kidd. We got that hoodie coming too. Why don't you get a shirt to go along with it? And Winnie Cannon is in, is here as well. <laughs> 